this is where we're going with this, everybody, facing your own music and being accountable. Allison, what what are you seeing out there with this emotional, psychological kind of conundrum that we're in and people mm -hmm. that want to think they want to get things fixed, but maybe not. And, you know, mm -hmm. well, maybe it's not my fault. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, because I see this a lot. And I think a lot of practitioners in my line of work see it where people will say that they want to evolve. They're not as happy as they could be. They know they've got some emotional, psychological stuff and they want to do the work. They want to live peaceful lives and they want to feel good. And then they'll engage in the work with a practitioner of some kind and then they'll quit like after two or three sessions or something like that. It happens a lot. Now I'm going to make a disclaimer and say that sometimes it's me. You know, if I'm not the right practitioner for people, that's a very valid thing. That's why there are so many different types of people that do this kind of stuff. If it doesn't resonate, it just doesn't. Maybe I'm not your flavor. That's cool. But there's a, a lot more often than not, I would say, and I'm try I try to be very realistic. It's it's not me. It's it's probably you. <laughs> so and there's a couple of things that I notice that I think. If you're ready or talking about doing this kind of thing, you might want to ask these questions of yourself and be aware of your own state of mind. And the first thing that I would say is it's really important you realize what your your ego is, okay? And when I say the word ego, people think of like arrogance or something. That's not what I mean. When we're born as babies into the world, we're these clean slates. We got nothing. And it's every experience that you have from the time you're laying in that bassinet up until who you are now. It's a compare, compre contrast of data kind of process, which is creating preferences. That's how you get your learned experiences. It basically forms your personality. It forms your ego side of yourself, you know? And the whole ego's job is this formation of a personality and its job is to keep you safe. It's to keep the status quo going. And when you're doing this kind of work, you are challenging that ego and your ego is a trickster. It is going to do everything it can to stop you from getting into uncomfortable spots. And there's all kinds of neuroscience and stuff that shows how over time you've created these pathways and that's what this, the, you know, the amygdala of the brain understands. And it's trying to keep that, those pathways online. And, you know, it, there's some, there's some science there that shows that we're up against, you know, some serious neuro stuff here. But at the same time, if you're going to do this work, you have to realize that it's going to get uncomfortable. And that is the point, because if you're not as happy as you could be, then what you're currently doing is not pushing you outside of any zone to develop any growth of any kind. So I think that what I come up against a lot with people who say they want to do the work is they haven't contended with this. They haven't not reconciled this ego thing, you know, that this is a real thing that's in place to keep you comfortable, safe, and um, out of harm's way. However, the brain is interpreting that. And so you might find yourself wanting to quit quicker than you even get into the weeds. And so I see that a lot with people. That's the first thing that is just sort of perplexing to me is because I think as an intelligent human, you know, you know that you're going to come up against uncomfortable stuff. Why would you not expect that? Um, but it's, it's interesting how quickly people abandon the effort. Would you like people to get a hold of you? Oh, probably the best way would be just to go to my website, which is allisonmcclintick.com, M-C-C-L-I-N-T-I-C-K, or you can find me on LinkedIn. I get a lot of inquiry through LinkedIn, and I think a lot of your listeners, uh, you know, maybe still have some of those accounts and things like that, or business folks. Uh, Instagram, too, you can find me on that way, or you can uh, text me. 248-897-1038. Talk about avoidance a little bit because that fits into, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Because if you avoid it, then obviously either if you're telling yourself, I want to do this and then you avoid it, then you obviously are not ready. Yeah. I, I tend to think that avoidance, I mean, sometimes it's laziness, but in this kind of work, I think avoidance is really about fear. 
I mean, I really think it's like a, a, um, a surface level reaction to a deeply seated fear of something. Um, you know, there's a book, a leadership book called, um, leadership on the line. And it's basically a concept about change. You know, the people don't fear change, they fear loss. And when they put up some kind of resistance or avoidance to some kind of initiative, it's because that they're afraid that something that they value is going to be taken from them, lost, fractured, something like that. So it's not the change or the initiative that they're really freaking out about so much as something that they value that they want to preserve. And sometimes those values are not things we should be trying to preserve. But I think with avoidance, we're afraid of something like there's a good exercise. It's a simple one. Take out a piece of paper, put down on one side what it is that you're wanting to do. And then on the other side, just have it say, you know, um, if I do X, Y, Z, I'm afraid that this will happen. Dot, 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 dot. Next line, next line. It's a simple, very simple exercise, but it gets it, you know, it gets your brain engaged you've got to figure out why you're avoiding something. I mean, there's a reason. And if you're not conscious about why you're avoiding it, then how do you expect to really ever get started? You have to know why you don't want to do it and what's stopping you from doing something. Because really what that is, is it's fear of something being lost or something happening, some value that you've you've put some weight on whether it's a good value or not, perhaps you think is going to be fractured. You know, so I think that's part of the issue, right? When we're talking about beliefs and this kind of enlightenment work is all about your beliefs. You you're you have to fracture the narrative and your belief structure. You've got to smash that thing with a hammer and put back into structure what you want to keep. And there's, you know, our experience is creating a structure of reality that has all kinds of junk in it. Good stuff, great stuff, bad stuff, painful stuff, stuff you avoid. So, you know, that's the thing you have to understand. If you don't know why you're avoiding it in the first place, afraid of what you might see behind that door, then you're never going to get started. And know that when you are ready to say, okay, I am ready to do this you are going to be opening the door to some scary <laughs> monsters on the other side, probably. But the result but, can be so amazing that yeah, when you well, yeah. the monster, you can slay the dragon. Yeah, because it's all stuff that you've chosen to hold on to. Right. It's it's not like, um, you know, even if something something has happened to you that's so horrible, that someone did something so horrible to you, we don't want to minimize the fact that a, you should have never had to experience that and B it was painful and cruel or whatever. Yeah, that's a given, but how you choose to look at it and how you allow it to affect you is entirely up to you. But that's the other thing that people avoid. They don't want to be responsible for, for saying I am contributing to the pain of this memory because I'm choosing to consider it painful. On all of this, Allison McClintock's our guest today, everybody, facing your music accountability. What would you like to leave as your takeaway from today's episode? I think it's just mainly those pieces that, you know, it, it, to encourage you that if you want, if you feel called to evolve emotionally and psychologically, the the universe or God or whatever your framework is, is putting you there for a reason. If you feel like you know there's something for you to work on or something for you to do, or you feel called or pulled in that direction, then please take that as a sign that that's what's supposed to be happening. You will either heed that call or you won't, and you'll continue to suffer. But when you decide to take, take it on, you have to realize that that belief structure, that reality you've created, your paradigms, your narratives... That is what you are uh, addressing. And that is what you're going to have to smash into pieces. And then you get that, but you get to put it back together the way that you want to. And it takes a little bit of time, but remember your ego is designed 
to try to keep you safe. It doesn't want you asking these questions, not because it has a life of its own, because it's trying to keep you functioning. It's like Maslow's hierarchy. Your ego is just trying to keep you alive and functioning. So you do kind of have to pull yourself off of your ego a little bit like a witness, that voice that's talking to you inside there. So I would just say, if you're having some trouble or you think it's going to be challenging, it will. And keep finding someone to work with so that you can get comfortable enough to see it through. Alison McClintock is badass. F facing your music, framing things up in a different aspect. One of the takeaways from today's episode I'd like to say is you got to be ready. You got to be ready with all this stuff, you guys. It's like if you're not ready, if you don't have the beliefs intact, if you have a limiting belief that's going to hold you back, don't waste your freaking money. Get the books that she that, that books books are the easiest, cheapest way to get gain knowledge. Podcasts are all over the place, but those are opinions. Okay. Books are opinions as well. But when you get an opinion and a referral from an Allison McClintock, like the Polishing the Mirror book, which I'm going to look into, now you got something to go by. And of course, I got, I, I have a huge library of books that I've read. So hit me up anytime you go. Been a good one. Thank you so much for watching, listening, being a fan of the show. And we will talk to you next time. I'm Papa Tom. This is the Tom Mad Show, and I appreciate you all very much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Love you. Peace out. We're out.